Welcome back to Drip Farm, where every sunrise brings new opportunities and every challenge is met with style and swag. In the upcoming year, we're taking our dedication to fashion to a whole new level. I don't want to give anything away, but y'all, I shine in the face of adversity. If you haven't seen my first 100 days yet, you can follow the link in the description or click on the card in the top right. The goals for this full year in the valley are as follows. A deluxe shed filled with woolly sheep, a deluxe coop bursting with bouncing bunnies, and my hat collection proudly on display. I want to dive deep into the arcane arts, enchanting my tools with only the best enchantments, and get the infinity blade. My farm and house will be a testament to taste and refinement, a showcase of elegance amidst the rustic charm of Stardew Valley. And of course, the pursuit of perfection is my ultimate goal. Alongside my trusty mods from the previous year, I've added a little extra flair with an expanded hat mouse collection. Check the description for the link and let's turn those heads on the valley's runway. So grab your watering can and your flashiest hat because this year on Drip Farm is going to be fabulous. Ah, uh, how wonderful to continue in a brand new year and not in the middle of winter. Kent introduced himself on day 113. I was still wearing my dino outfit from my last Skull Caverns run and obviously wanted to get into the spring feeling. So after tailoring a spring shirt with a spring onion and putting on my relaxed fit shorts and an orchid headband, which is one of the hats from the new mod, I got to work on the farm. I cleared off debris, put down more iridium sprinklers, then bought and planted 24 of each spring crop to cook and craft with, as well as 192 rhubarb seeds for kegging. The abandoned Joja Mart was finally struck by lightning that night, even though I had finished the community center weeks ago. I said hi to my animals for the first time in what felt like forever on day 114, then went to the Shrine of Illusions to get pink hair to match my fit. I had had the items for the abandoned bundle ready for quite a while, so I was able to complete it right away. Go on now. Be with your friends, you poor thing. I asked the Statue of Uncertainty to reset my mining professions, then headed to the island to clear off the farmland, take the dangers in the deep quest, and find my first snake vertebrae. The Junimos turned the abandoned supermarket into a movie theater while I slept, and I chose the geologist and excavator professions. I'm gonna need hundreds of geodes to finish the museum and trade in for hats at the desert. Some starfruit wine was ready on day 115. I picked up the island ingredients quest to ship 100 pineapples though I would have preferred Terra roots. But I'll see what I can do. I gave Emily an aquamarine and finally got her up to 10 hearts, then started working my way down the reset mines. By the way, I'll be running on pure caffeine-induced adrenaline for the upcoming year, thanks to the hot java ring I got in the last 100 days. I always forget how hard the enemies hit down here, but I survived and even got my first galaxy soul, making it down to level 17 and heading home for the night. On day 116, I tailored an excavator shirt using a nautilus fossil and put on my fedora and relaxed fit pants to look the part for my plans for that day. After handing Kent a birthday daffodil, I headed back into the mines, hoping to get as far down as possible and collect as many geodes as I could. Unexpected prismatic shards are the best prismatic shards. I left on level 53 to be back in bed before passing out. It was so nice to see my little Junimos harvesting their first crops on day 117. Progress down the mines was extremely slow. I almost died and was too nauseated to eat anything, so I had to leave on level 56 to wait until the debuff wore off. Only made it down to level 65 before having to leave. On day 118, the starfruit in my greenhouse was ready. I planted more, including some ancient fruit seeds, and kegged them straight away. I tailored a cowboy poncho with a rusty spur, dyed my pants to match, and put on a scary looking Devarucci hat from the hat mouse to scare the monsters into submission. Emily and I bonded over our love of fabrics. Isn't she dreamy? Then I headed back to the mines. My outfit and being well prepared with enough food really helped, and I made it to level 85. Day 119 was a Sunday and my last chance to finish the key quest to get to the bottom of the mines. It was a super bad luck day, just what I need. After quickly doing my farm chores, handing a birthday pepper to Lewis, and collecting the oak resin, it was back to the mines. I never thought seeing a mushroom floor would bring up trauma. Am I the only one who didn't know that enemies could drop seed makers? Um, yeah, so I died. I lost 5,000 G and 13 things from my backpack, including all of my oak resin. That's a bummer. 
I ate a purple mushroom and tried to make it all the way down, but passed out on level 104. These key quests are not going well for me. On day 120, I saw that my Junimos had picked lots of crops, including the inventory killing tulips and blue jazz. I made sure to put a few of everything into my fridge before kegging the rest. Chu found her first truffles, so I shipped one and put the second one into an oil maker. After trading my Omni Geodes for artifact troves of the desert and buying 250 more starfruit seeds from Sandy, I made Clint crack everything open. I was able to donate tons to the museum, getting a crystallarium and a magic rock candy, and only needed to donate four more things to finish it, one of them being a strange doll I could hoe up, because I had already found the secret note. I also picked up Robin's resource rush quest. I crafted five more crystallariums, added them all to my shed, then tailored a clown getup, with a miner's treat to make a propeller hat and a tomato for a tomato shirt. It was only fitting for what I had to do next. I went to Marlin and asked them to find my oak resin, having to ignore the buttload of espressos I lost. At least I was getting pretty close to a lot of the Monster Slayer goals. The 30 oak resin were in the mail on day 121. Thank you, Marlin. I crafted 30 more kegs as well as another chest to add to my design corner since the other ones were getting full, and three more preserve jars for all the fish row I had. Look how nice and colorful the ponds are. I added the kegs to the quarry, then went to Ginger Island where I finally planted some pineapples for the island ingredients quest. Who knows if I'll be able to get the 100 pineapples in time. When I slayed the tiger slimes on the little plateau, I got the monster eradication goal for killing 1,000 slimes. I also picked up Key's kindness quest. I know I'll be able to finish this one. I decided to plant all the tarot roots that had been piling up in my chest on day 122. With tons of presents in my backpack, I handed out love gifts to anyone I saw in the valley. When I walked into the mayor's house, I got to watch my girlfriend inspire others to break out of their shells and try on something new for a change. Why are you so gross? I was jealous and wanted my own new fit. So I tailored a slime shirt from a petrified slime, bought a green beret that represents bravery, and turned my hair green in commemoration of killing all those slimes. Gingham got my propeller hat, and I chopped enough wood to finish Robin's quest. I continued to hand out gifts for most of day 123, taking a quick break to pick up the slime charmer ring from Gil. The only other thing I did was that I started the fetch quest from Seaweed Lady by giving the picture to Kent and the gourmet tomato salt to Gus. I'll try to finish this tomorrow. I needed as much luck as I could get on day 124, so I made a Yobo shirt with solar essence and put on my lucky bow. After handing the valley roast to Sandy, I ate a spicy eel, drank a ginger ale, and got on the one-armed bandit in the casino. I actually got three star drops, and after a while, I wanted to try blackjack to get bigger wins. But after losing 10,000 coins, I went back to the calico spin machine. I'm not ready for the big leagues. I had over 90,000 coins when I got bored and traded them in for nine alien rare crows. I handed the remote from Sandy to George, gave the wizard the arctic shard, and Willy the worm. It was raining on the island, so Birdie would have to get the pirate's locket some other time. After a volcano run, I combined the hot java ring and the slime charmer ring at the forge. I was feeling nostalgic on day 125 because it was egg hunt day, which had kicked off my fashion journey just a year ago. Time flies when you're staying swaggy. Lots of starfruit wine was ready, and I refilled the kegs with vegetables harvested by my junimos before heading to the festival. I bought over 300 strawberry seeds and won the egg hunt, even though the prize this year was very disappointing in comparison to the straw hat. At the end of the day, I put down all the speaker I had and as many strawberry seeds as I could. The starfruit wine I shipped made me over 370,000 G. The next day, my rhubarbs were ready and replaced with strawberry seeds. The porch lights on, but no one's home. The rhubarbs were kegged, then I commissioned a new barn from Robin. I spent a good part of the day looking for Haley to give her a birthday coconut, which finally completed the Key's Kindness quest too. After collecting more oak resin and adding more kegs to the quarry, I spent the rest of the evening adding pathing to the farm and getting an idea of what the top of it will look like. On day 127, I made myself a rusty shirt with a rusty spoon and put my trusty old straw hat back on. Hey buddy, long time no see. I also finally got around to changing the colors of my chests to match the aesthetic of my farm. How has it taken me this long? After giving the bear some maple syrup, hello, and handing Evelyn a leak she had asked for for George, I talked to Alex for the first time in forever. 
please get over yourself. Then I went to Ginger Island, put down sprinklers, and planted a few more pineapples. I visited Key's Walnut Room, chose his hunger challenge quest, and used the key gems I had to get the key to the town and a few mushroom tree seeds. Back in the valley, I took Leo to the movies to watch The Brave Little Sapling, then started to work on what I was envisioning for the top of the farm. A little hangout spot for my alien rare crows that will wear all the hats I collect. It's obviously not finished yet, but I mean, it's something. I planted my mushroom tree seeds with some speed grow, then picked and simultaneously replanted my star fruits on day 128. I wanted to look like part of the alien family I had started, so after changing my appearance at the wizard, I tailored radioactive goggles with a radioactive bar, a green shirt with a jade, and dyed my pants to match. Take me to your leader. Then I headed to the island, checked the western part for dig spots, since I still need a second snake vertebrae, but didn't find one, and handed Bertie her late husband's locket. I hit up the volcano for a chance at the tiger hat and didn't find that either, but at least there was a deluxe pirate hat in a rare chest. Editing Mimi here. This is, in fact, not a deluxe pirate hat. I don't know what I was thinking when I wrote this script. Nothing much happened on day 129. The taro roots were fully grown, and after picking them, I traded in magma caps for pineapple seeds at the island trader. Then it was off to the volcano again. I really want that tiger hat, and the enemies can also drop pineapple seeds, even though I'm pretty sure that quest is a lost cause at this point. I completed the monster slayer goal for killing magma sprites today, which was kind of neat. My veggie juices were ready on day 130, and the kegs were refilled with starfruit. One of the last artifacts I needed, a chicken statue, popped out of the stick spot. Then I asked Robin to upgrade my new barn. Oh Pam, I wish I didn't identify with you as much as I do. I too, love me a good beer. I spent the rest of the day decorating my farm a bit. I want the aliens to feel at home here, and like to think they come from a planet that's lush and green. Day 131 was a super good luck day, and I wanted to make the most of it, so I attempted my Skull Caverns run without eating to complete the key quest I still had to do. I downed an espresso and munched on my rock candy from Gunther, then headed in. Thanks to my Slime Charmer ring, I didn't have to worry about slimes, which definitely helped. I got not one, but two auto petters from chests and made it down to level 100 by 3.30 p.m., where Mr. Key was waiting for me to give me my Iridium Snook. I even found a dark cowboy hat in a chest on level 144, which is one of the hats you can only find in the Skull Caverns. By 2 a.m., I had made it down to level 161 and was very pleased with my efforts. Day 132 was a rainy day. I put the auto petters into my barn and coop, then got the last barn upgrade I needed. I'm not proud to admit that I knocked on Shane's door pretty rudely, or more like I tried to break it down, but it worked, and he came out so I could give him his birthday beer. The old mariner was standing out on the beach and sold me a mermaid's pendant. Of course, my proposal outfit had to be perfect, so I went back to my usual skin color and dyed my hair a light pink, then tailored a necklace shirt with refined quartz, a skirt made from a blue jazz, put on a red charming ribbon from the hat mouse, and used the dyeing pots to color coordinate everything. I proposed to Emily in front of all of her friends and regulars at the saloon, and she accepted. Hey guys, drinks on me! I'm getting married! Sucks to be you, Clint. My mushroom trees were fully grown on day 133. I immediately chopped them down since I hadn't planted them to beautify the farm, although I must say I do like the way the simple foliage mod makes them look, but because I want to get the mushroom cap. Welp, no luck this time. Lots of rhubarb wine was ready, which I sold at Pierre's, putting me over a million G. That meant I could afford the desert obelisk. Back on the island, I took the five prismatic shards and all the cinder shards I had to the forge to start getting some good enchantments. I had already enchanted my sword twice in the first year, never getting anything worth my while. But this time I got Crusader, which was exactly what I wanted. Now I can kill mummies and get cloth even more easily. I had to enchant my pickaxe twice to get swift, got shaving on my axe right away, perfect, and reaching on my hoe, which I didn't want but I didn't have any more prismatic shards, so I would have to try again some other time. Why are you still beating this dead horse, Mimi? On day 134, I handed Mara a cactus fruit she had asked for on the help wanted board, chose the wizard's ectoplasm quest from the special orders board, then headed to the island. My trip was kinda pointless since there still weren't any pineapples or dig spots on the farm. The dangers in the deep quest was available again, and I wanted to redeem myself, so I took it. 
I made sure to get some cheese and spicy eels from a chest before getting to work on the reset mines. Despite the bad luck and my late start, I made it down to level 17 before having to head home. Not bad. Day 135 started out like something out of a fairy tale. Emily looked gorgeous in her dress that had a hint of blue that matched her hair. My bridal outfit was a shirt tailored from an ornamental fan, a veil made from a pearl, and a simple dress made from honey that I had dyed to be snow white. And so they lived happily ever after. Emily had more of a no-nonsense attitude and told me to get to work making the moolah, so that's what I did. I moved Lagerfeld, McQueen, Corduroy, and Baby Doll into the fully upgraded barn. Robin was on her way to her gym class when I asked her to paint my barn and start working on a new coop. I got my first banana from the tree in my greenhouse, then it was back to the mines. Bridezilla coming through! It was the flower dance on day 136, and this year I wanted to go. I knew who I wanted to dance with, and I still needed the last festival exclusive rare crow. I couldn't dye anything since I couldn't get into Emily's old house or buy something new from the hat mouse because going there would start the festival, but I think my outfit was still pretty spot on when I tailored a high-waisted shirt made from basic fertilizer and put on my orchid headband. After buying the rare crow and the tub of flowers recipe, I talked to all the villagers in their cute outfits. You can't tell me Evelyn doesn't look incredible. Clint had the nerve to ask me if I thought my wife would dance with him before I asked her myself, and we happily grouped together. I got the deluxe scarecrow recipe in the mail on day 137. My outfit for the day needed to give me strength for the enemies in the mines, so I made a white ghee with a pale broth and put on a bao bao from the hat mouse. Then kegged strawberries and rhubarb before continuing to make my way down. I sped through the forest levels with the pesky putrid ghosts and got an ectoplasm from one of them. Made it to level 75 when it started getting late, so I headed back to bed. On day 138, I chopped down two more mushroom trees without luck, then realized I had forgotten to open the gate of the sheep barn. My poor babies, I'm so sorry. They were woolly and I didn't have shears, so after picking and replanting starfruits and handing over the ectoplasm to the wizard, I paid Marnie a visit. Shane was in a drunken stupor, but I was able to help with my trusty watering can. I bought another auto grabber and heater, then got eight more sheep to fill up the barn. Patchy, Fishnet, Glitter, Jersey, Lame, Merino, Nylon, and Poncho. Caroline, that was a birthday gift for your husband, you greedy thing. <sighs> the rest of the day was spent getting further down the mines. A flying skull dropped a skeleton shirt. I finished slaying skeletons and void spirits for the monster eradication goals, and I died on level 98. I gave Emily a birthday aquamarine on day 139, who was so in love with me that she gave me a star drop. Thank you, my fashion muse. I visited my little woolly princesses, added two more signs to my slime jack and lava eel ponds, then went to Robin to commission an upgrade for my coop. After that, it was back to the mines. I was doing pretty well despite the terrible luck today and even got a double squire's helmet drop from one of the metalheads. I was so close to getting all the way down, but passed out on level 118 at 2 a.m. Straight back down I went on day 140. I made it to the bottom by 12 p.m. Okay, so I didn't collect 100 pineapples. Or keg 12 potatoes for Pam, which I hadn't even told you about yet because I'm kind of ashamed of how bad I've been at finishing these quests. But at least I finished the ectoplasm and mines quest this week. These quests had been stressing me out and I wanted a nice fit to get ready for summer tomorrow. That's why I tailored a strap top with coral, put on my relaxed fit shorts and a tropa clip. I had bought from the hat mouse, then dyed everything in Emily's crafts room. I also went to the wizard for a nice new hair color. The oak resin was ready again, so I made 30 more kegs and added them to the quarry. Big surprise everyone! The first day of a new season started with me scything my dead crops and prepping everything for new seeds. Just like in spring, I planned on buying 24 of every crop and filling up everything else with the best crop to keg. Starfruits. Honestly though, why was I in Pierre's bedroom? I found my first wilderness golem of the year that night. When creating the farm in the first 100 days, I had explicitly decided to have monsters spawn on my farm to have a better chance at getting the living hat from these suckers. But it seems like all the pathing I'm putting down is making it nearly impossible for them to appear. On day 142, 
I decided to put on a new summer fit. A tube top, tailored from a sea cucumber, and a shark hat from the hat mouse. You're gonna need a bigger boat. I picked up the quest to give Gus two dozen eggs before heading to the island, where I saw the potatoes and the pineapples fully grown, and felt that twang of shame again. I forgot that straight away though, when I found the last snake vertebrae I needed. Whoop whoop! I also decided to pick up the dangers in the deep quest again and use the key gems I had to get myself a horse flute and three more mushroom seeds. Come, Gingham, Professor Snail needs this snake spine. After finishing my farm chores on day 143, I commissioned Robin to give me another coop upgrade and asked Penny to go to the movies with me. This dude was hogging the crane game, which made me a bit sad before watching Journey of the Prairie King. There's something very soothing about getting to open a kajillion geodes. I actually didn't even need to open all of them, since I found the last two minerals I needed for the museum almost right away. But I just really love surprises. I'm ready for that star drop, Gunther. Although I was still really liking my shark hat, this called for a celebratory outfit. So I used a golden mask and an omni geode to tailor a mask and a shirt. I bought 200 more starfruit seeds from Sandy, then kegged lots of coffee beans, starfruits, and strawberries. Being a walking artifact was cool and all that, but I was planning on going to the island on day 144 and wanted a getup to match. So I tailored an island bikini from a golden coconut and a pirate hat with a treasure chest. Before I shipped off, I gave Gus 24 eggs, completing his famous omelette quest, and handed Jazz a pink cake for her birthday. I just planted a miscellaneous assortment of seeds that had been piling up in my chests on the island farm for the rest of the day. I've done it again, y'all. I forgot to change the day counter on day 145. I'll realize my mistake tomorrow. I accidentally put an egg into the incubator while taking care of my chickens. It's a happy accident, I guess. My deluxe coop was finally ready, so I moved Dolce and Gabbana into it and went to Marnie's to buy 10 more rabbits to fill it up. Say hello to Spandex, Tool, Velvet, Petticoat, Mary Jane, like the shoe, not the plant, Macrame, Kimono, Flannel, Chelsea, like the boots, and Brocade. While I was at Robin's to paint my coop, I asked her to upgrade my house for the final time. Since I knew I'd start getting lots more wool soon, I crafted more looms and started rearranging my design area. I was very confused about why I couldn't pick up this chest, and it took me a while to understand that the Tropa Clip was still in it. You can see it if you squint. Day 146 started in a very satisfying way. Who has two thumbs and is an up-and-coming cloth mogul? This lady right here. A train was passing through Stardew Valley right in the middle of me changing my getup, but I didn't want to miss it, so I sped off with Gingham. Well, it's nothing special, but it's something. Back to the tailoring. In celebration of my sheep and rabbits, I made a fluffy shirt with a chicken statue, put on a fluffy animal hat from the hat mouse, and dyed my pants and hair a snowy white. Long live the floofs. I downed a lucky lunch and a ginger ale, then went to the desert casino to gamble for 13 more alien rare crows. You get a hat, and you get a hat, and you get a hat. I love my job. Day 147 was a Sunday and a very good luck day. So after trading 116 jades for staircases at the desert trader and collecting oak resin, I staircased my way through the reset mines, only stopping to mine radioactive ore. It's so nice to find 2500G just lying around. My trek went well, and I was getting some pretty nice loot, including a delicioso mine tortilla, and made it to the bottom right before 1am. When I lay my head to rest that night, a strange sound could be heard outside. Day 148, Emily asked for 200 fiber. She knows how much I love surprises. I don't deserve her. I chopped down more mushroom trees to no avail, then saw that my growing alien family had attracted a strange capsule. The star fruit in my greenhouse was ready, and I was able to plant 14 more ancient fruit seeds. Since it was raining, I tailored a raincoat with a snail and bought a sakat from the hat mouse against the downpour. I spent the day chopping trees and looking for fiber for my beloved. I also picked up the tropical fish quest from the special orders board, and when I went to give Gus a birthday orange, I walked into this abomination of a cutscene where Clint tried to hit on my wife right in front of me. This motivated me to ramp up my fiber finding, so I spammed level 81 of the mines to farm it. It was getting late, so I was heading home and looked into my inventory to see how much fiber I had gotten when I realized I had gotten the living hat. 
How fitting. It was the love for my fashionable wife that led to the rarest of all drops. I slayed my last wilderness golem on the farm and didn't give a frick about its drops. On day 149, I made a grass skirt with hay and a leafy shirt with a jaguite to go with my prized possession. Look, I'm a humanoid bush. You can call me Tony the Tiger, cause I feel great. I took a strange bun to the Shrine of Night Terrors to get rid of monsters on my farm because I'm a woman who don't need no wilderness golems, then went straight to the Skull Caverns on this very good luck day. I actually don't know why I was surprised, since this just had to be the outfit I was wearing when finding my first lucky ring. Now, I'm in a bit of a pickle since I really like my ring combos, but obviously I also want more luck. Today was also the day I finished my monster eradication goal for mummies. My friends that had kicked off my designing career exactly 100 days ago. I swear, it's like Yoba is sending me a sign that I am doing the work I was destined for. Day 150, I thought about tailoring a lucky fit in celebration of my new lucky ring, but I couldn't think of anything more lucky than getting the rarest hat in the game. So my bushy getup will stay for another day. I love you guys. My first starfruit harvest was ready, along with some other crops, so I made a quick visit to Sandy's to buy 500 more seeds. After planting them, I decided it was the perfect day to give a rabbit's foot to the truck driver next to the movie theater and get the lucky charm. My kegs were also ready, and I was able to craft 30 more to add to the quarry. I made half a million that night thanks to all the wine. The alien had escaped on day 151. When I find whoever let it out, they're dead! <laughs> My happy accident chicken had hatched and I named her Hand-Me-Down. I knew I couldn't keep my living hat on forever, unfortunately. So I tailored a pair of shorts with some grapes, a vacation shirt with a coconut, and sunglasses with a cinder shard. It was the perfect luau outfit. Gingham had been wearing the shark hat for quite a while, but I gave her my precious living hat for safekeeping. Once I arrived at the beach, I bought some decorations for the farm and my house, talked to all the villagers. What exactly is that, Linus? added a gold star cheese to the soup, and watched my wife try to seduce me with her dance moves. Apparently, the soup was gooder than grits. After taking care of the farm, I went to Emily's dyeing pots to turn my shorts orange on day 152. What can I say? I'm a sucker for complimentary colors. I was heading to Willie's boat when Alex, who still doesn't even know my name properly, chucked a football at my face. Be the bigger person. Be the bigger person. All of the forageables I had planted on the island were ready, so I picked them and turned them back into seeds to sell, since it's more profitable to sell them that way. The pineapples and rice were also ready and shipped. Mr. Key gave me my chance for revenge from the last 100 days, and I plan on conquering the Skull Caverns invasion quest this time. I traded the key gems I had for the Hyper Speed Grow and Deluxe Fertilizer recipes, then planted some rhubarb seeds and put a banana on the Gorilla's Jungle Shrine in exchange for three golden walnuts. Then I worked on the Tropical Fish quest for the rest of the day. On day 153, I made the difficult decision to unforge my hot java ring in favor of the lucky ring. I had accumulated quite a lot of coffee and espressos, so they should last me for a while. I found the secret note showing me where to dig up the very last golden walnut I needed, which was also hiding an ostrich egg. Willie's tropical fish quest was completed after a few hours, then I headed back to the valley. Alex was asking for an earth crystal, and since it was his birthday, I took the quest and cooked him a complete breakfast, in the hopes that I wouldn't have to deal with him anymore after today. But looks like that was just wishful thinking. I hear you, brother. I just had to cook a meal for Alex, and he's still not at full hearts. I warped to the desert right away on day 154, got as many staircases as I could from the desert trader and staircased down. The Skull Caverns invasion quest would not best me this time, not like on the last day of my first 100 days video. Thanks to my key hat, my midnight dog jacket tailored from squid ink, and my blue skin and hair, I looked exactly like Mr. Key. You can't kill me, I'm your maker. I still couldn't resist a dino floor on level 44, where I got the Monster Slayer achievement. My prize in the chest on level 100 made my triumph even better, the blue cowboy hat, one of the hats you can only find in the Skull Caverns. My run went marvelously, and I passed out on level 174 at 2am.
After sorting away my loot from yesterday, which included 5 prismatic shards, almost 300 iridium ore, and 47 cloth, I put on my blue cowboy hat and did my farm chores. I wanted to clean up my quest log a bit, so after gathering the oak resin from the train station, I fished for a largemouth bass for Jody's invitation from last year. Oh no, not you again. Then I handed Dimitris a pufferfish, Pierre a sashimi, Robin 10 hardwood, Penny a grape, had dinner with Jody, Kent, and Sam, and gave Kent the starfruit he had asked for. Phew! I asked Maru to go to the movies with me and thought she might like the star drop sorbet. No one was hogging the crane game, so I got a few decorations for the farm before watching Journey of the Prairie King for the second time. I wanted to start incubating my ostrich egg, but couldn't remember where I had put the dang thing. Day 156 was another very good luck day. I tailored a bomber jacket with a cherry bomb and baggy pants with a slime egg. Then I quickly changed back to my usual skin color, dyed my hair orange to stand out against the blue hat, and dyed my pants to match. I had a pretty good run through the skull caverns and made sure to pick up all the omni geodes I could get my little hands on. I took a closer look at my loot on day 157 and realized I already had enough omni geodes to trade at the desert trader for one of the prismatic head pieces. I'll have to do that soon. The starfruit wine was ready, and I kegged an assortment of different crops that I had on me. It was Sam's birthday, and I found him in the museum, where I gave him an iridium-quality cactus fruit. Then I chugged off to the island, where my starfruits were fully grown, which was good, since I hadn't been able to fill up all of my kegs yet. I got the magic bait recipe with the key gems I had, and took the prismatic grange quest. After admiring the vast expanse of the universe with Maru, I kegged the rest of my island crops. So, by now I have checked every chest I have, including the tailoring ones, but just can't find the ostrich egg. This is extremely worrying. Thanks to my plentiful bounty of wine, I made almost 900,000 G that night. Y'all, I look back at my footage to see which chest I put my ostrich egg into. I cooked my ostrich egg into a gift for Alex. No! God, please, no! You know what? I... I think I deserve this. Karma's a bitch, and that's what I had been to Alex for the past 157 days. Is he a great person? No, not really. Does he say some of the most downright abominable things at times? Yes, he does. But did that give me the right to stoop down to his level and be an awful person in return? No, most definitely not. And this was the way I would have to pay for my misstep. I was planning on putting on my trusty old Dunn's cap and this Bobo shirt I tailored from a strange doll, but I remembered I had enough Omni geodes to get something new at the desert. I gave Gingham the propeller hat instead. You are an enabler, Gingham. You deserve this just as much as I do. Then warped to the desert to buy 300 starfruit seeds, 200 deluxe speed grows, trade 3 prismatic shards for a rock candy, and 333 Omni geodes for a magic turban. Afterwards, I used the wizard's book of summoning to get the island obelisk and used it straight away. I put down all the speakro and starfruit seeds I could before starting to look for the ostrich egg in the volcano. You can only find them in rare chests, but I only saw a regular one on level 9 that I didn't even get to on time before passing out. I also spent days 159 and 160 in the volcano, where I got a total of 3 boring chests and 1 rare one. It's so sad that my designer heart is disappointed to get a cool new hat instead of a frickin' egg. The only other important things that happened were that I was able to harvest more starfruits and I changed into my deluxe pirate hat and a gaudy shirt made from a soapstone on day 160. I took a break from the volcano on day 161 to give Pam pale ale and finally finish collecting fiber for Emily and for Key's prismatic range. I headed to the mutant bug lair first, which was very bountiful. I had collected enough to give 200 fiber to Emily, but was still missing some for Key. Unfortunately, the dangerous version of the mines I had turned on makes it much harder to find fiber, and I only had 67 when I was close to dying and decided to head home. I used the rest of the little time I had today to start filling out my shipping collection. Day 162 was the dwarf's birthday, so I made sure to visit him and give him a topaz. Some pale ales and veggie juices were ready, and I kegged more hops in their stead. My oak resin was also ready, and I decided to chop the trees at the railroad. Afterwards, I wanted to try finishing the prismatic range with the tree fertilizer that was starting to pile up in my chests, 
but I couldn't add it to the box, so I used some of the oak resin instead. Key's Kindness Quest was up for grabs, and since I still need to work on friendships anyway, I went with that. Day 163, I wanted an outfit that would help me get this love gifts quest done quickly. So I tailored an energy tonic into a letterman jacket and put on a small cap I had gotten from the island trader for 30 tarot roots yesterday. Handing out this many presents is a sport. The starfruit in my greenhouse was fully grown and I was able to replace it with quite a few more ancient seeds. Handing out gifts is pretty much all I did for the rest of the day, getting quite a few cutscenes with various villagers. Here, Louis, you sicko. I also picked up the quest from Robin to collect 80 hardwood. Hi, Alex. Um, your hair looks really nice today. <sighs> when I stopped by the Adventurer's Guild, I realized I still had quite a few rewards to pick up, including the skeleton mask, arcane hat, and knight's helmet. Looks like I only need to kill about 100 more serpents to be a monster slayer hero. <sighs> I love this lady. Leah was at my doorstep on day 164 to give me a sculpture. What is that? Lots of kegs were ready once again, and I was able to add 36 more to the quarry. Then I was off to hand out the last loved gifts to complete Key's quest. I am so glad you like it, Alex. Have a great day. Days 165, 166, 167 and 168 were full of more volcano runs to try to find the friggin ostrich egg. I started by tailoring an arcane outfit with the wizard's arcane hat from the adventurer's guild and an arcane shirt tailored from a void essence. Maybe the mystic arts will help me find it. Spoiler alert, they didn't. Here's a supercut of all of the chests I found in these four days. Other than that, the most important things that happened were that I continued to collect hardwood for Robin's quest, harvested lots of rhubarb on the island and replaced it with starfruit, and Leo decided to move to the valley after I gave him a birthday mango. When I realized that my arcane outfit wasn't working, I tailored a trout soup into a ranger shirt and donned a deluxe cowboy hat I had gotten from the island trader. I'm just interested in protecting our precious wildlife. That's why I want to find the egg. I was confused about the magic turban that stopped changing colors when I put it on one of the aliens, then completed Robin's hardwood quest, getting the big help achievement. I picked up a tropical TV from the island trader, and on the evening of day 168, Emily gave me my new prized possessions, her self-made outfit, complete with boots. I proudly wore it while watching the dance of the moonlight jellies with her as summer came to a close. Day 169 marked the beginning of fall, and normally I would have changed into a new outfit, but I had just gotten Emily's outfit and would not disrespect her like that, so I'll keep it on for now. I planted and fertilized all the seeds, this time opting for pumpkins as my keggable moneymakers. Day 170 was Penny's birthday, and I gave her an emerald. I had over a million G in my pockets, and after finding the final clam I needed at the beach, I made my way to the wizard to get the last two obelisks. But before I could get there, Penny asked me to give the children a little lesson. Unfortunately, they didn't want to hear about my designing experience. Once I placed the earth and water obelisks on my farm, I crafted hundreds of fiber seeds and planted them on the island. Mr. Key's crop quest was up for grabs, and I've never completed it before, so I decided to challenge myself to do it this time around. 60% perfect. That's a D, and unacceptable. Day 171 was a very good luck day, so I tailored myself a gray suit using an Esperite and put on a boy's cap to look semi-professional. I'll be hitting up the Skull Caverns, and I mean business. I want to grind out Omni Geode and Key Bean collecting and kill as many serpents as I can, since they're the last monster eradication goal I have to complete. Once I have enough Omni Geodes to get the last two hats at the Desert Trader, I'll finally be able to change back my mining professions to start selling metal bars to supplement my income. By the end of the day, I had made it down to level 146 and collected 23 Key Beans, 93 Omni Geodes, almost 200 Iridium Ores, and two more Prismatic Shards. It was time for some farm maintenance I'd been slacking on on day 172. My kegs were ready and refilled with starfruit and rhubarb, and I was almost able to finally completely fill up my greenhouse with ancient fruit seeds. 
I got some hay for my starving animals and wondered if the whole put a fence post on grass so it can't be fully eaten by the animals thing really works or if I'm just doing something wrong. I opened some geodes at Clint's and finally got a petrified slime that the slime jacks in my fish pond had been asking for for quite some time. Some pineapple plants were sacrificed in order to make room for my first 30 key beans I had collected, and that night, my beverages made me over 1.1 million G. Since my tailoring chests were overflowing again, on day 173, I put down some aquatic sanctuaries I had been getting from Key's Walnut Room over the past few weeks, filled them with sea urchins, and put hats on them. It was time to get back to work looking for that ostrich egg again, so I tailored a tropical curry into a tropical sunrise shirt and put on a chicken mask I bought from the hat mouse. I mean, an ostrich is basically just a tropical chicken. Tomato tomato, am I right? I gave Pierre's missing stock list, then warped the island. The next four days will, once again, be dominated by volcano runs. The only exciting things that happened were that I planted some more key beans I found, traded jades for staircases, and was able to harvest the first key crops and turn them into even more beans to replant them. In case you didn't know, putting your key crops into seed makers is the most efficient way to get more beans. I also got the last bougie enchantments I wanted. Bottomless on my watering can, generous on my hoe, and master on my fishing rod. Now I just need to get some galaxy souls for my galaxy sword to finish that goal. Then, on day 176, I picked up the extended family quest and changed up my outfit since the whole tropical chicken thing wasn't working. I'm a hunter now, sporting a hunter's cap from the hat mouse and a canvas jacket tailored from a chewing stick. I went with the island ingredients quest to get 100 tarot roots. Now that I can do. Shh, BBOE quiet. I'm hunting lost witch eggs. And, do you think it worked? It did. Thank you, Yoba. Thank you. I swear, I'll never be mean to Alex again. Oopsie. Day 177 still says 176 at the top. I was so excited about what had just happened that I forgot to change the number. You understand, I'm sure. The fiber on the island farm was ready. Ah, this is bliss. Then I planted all the tarot roots I had been getting from my volcano runs and replanted more fiber seeds. You go right here. Sheesh. The next things I wanted to hunt in my getup were the legendary fish for Key's quest. So with the help of some wild bait and a trap bobber on my newly enchanted fishing rod, I successfully hooked and caught the legend 2 and 2 miss anglers before it was time to hit the hay in the sewers. On day 178, I checked in on my ostrich egg. Ready yet? No? Okay, take your time. It's always so satisfying to be able to load up all of the looms with wool. I wanted to finish Mr. Key's quest, and to look the part, I tailored a dish of the sea into a shirt of the sea, and put on this fish hat from the mod. Let me know what you think of this outfit. I know it's not becoming to fish for compliments, but I think I look really so fish -dicated. Making my way to the different spots in the valley, I fished up the radioactive carp, the son of crimson fish, and the glacier fish junior. 25 more key gems in the bag. Day 179 was a super good luck day, and I was preparing to go to the Skull Caverns, but realized I had a lot to do on the farm. So after putting some of my legendary fish into one of the tanks and tailoring a soft arrow shirt out of an arrowhead, I did the grown-up thing and finished my chores. I rebeaned and replanted key fruit that was fully grown on the island. I think I'm gonna need more seed makers. Cleared out the bat cave for the first time in forever. Bought 150 starfruit seeds from Sandy and traded in three prismatic shards for a magic rock candy, as it was a Thursday. After selling some of the weapons and rings that were starting to fill up my chests to Marlin, I saw that my kegs were ready. I had over one full stack of coffee beans, so I decided to keg those. They processed so quickly that I had just finished filling up the kegs when the first ones were finished. Passed out while trying to fill all of the kegs with starfruit. Day 180. After helping my Junimos pick the pumpkins, it was straight back to kegging. What were you doing in my shed, Marlin? I planted more key beans and pumpkins and kind of just did nothing for the rest of the day. Right before going to bed, I put the rest of my legendary fish and some seaweed and rocks into the fish tanks. It was a Skull Caverns day on day 181. I still needed to kill more serpents and collect more Omni Geodes, so I tailored a flame shirt with a spicy eel and a swashbuckler hat with a dragon tooth. I munched on a magic rock candy and had over 100 staircases in my pockets to blow. I mean, just look at it. It's beautiful. 
I know they say too much of a good thing is a bad thing, but I never wanted this day to end. On day 182, I still had happy hormones coursing through my veins from yesterday's events, so I was like, why not just do it again? This is exactly how drugs work, so please be mindful, children. I quickly put my loot away, bought more bombs from the dwarf, and was back at it. Despite the fact that I didn't have any staircases today, it still went extremely well. I was even able to finally achieve the last monster eradication goal. One step closer to perfection. I passed out on level 195, only four floors less than yesterday. I was tired of watching my poor woolly babies starve, so on day 183, I went to Marnie's, at 7am on a Monday by the way, thanks to the key to the town, and was able to buy hundreds of hay. My Junimos had harvested lots of crops over the past three days, and the ones on the island were ready to be picked as well. I had 266 key crops and was pretty sure today would be the last time I would need to rebean and replant them. So that's what I did for the rest of the day. Ooh, surprise ancient seed. Ooh, two more. Dang it. Day 184 was the second Stardew Valley Fair of my swaggy playthrough. I was still really liking the swashbuckler hat, but I wanted to look a bit more farmery for the fair. So I used a hazelnut to tailor brown overalls. I was hoping it would match my brown pants, but as you can see, the shades are just not the same. Why can't I go into Emily's old house to use her dyeing pots just because it's a festival day? We're married for God's sake. Before I went into town, I harvested all of the fiber and taro roots that were ready on the island. Finally, finishing Caroline's tropical ingredients quest felt so good. Since I had already won last year's Grange competition, I didn't feel like I needed to prove myself to anyone, so I just put in a bunch of prismatic shards and a key bean. It still got me second place, and I didn't tell Pierre I let him win. Caroline sent me the solar panel recipe in the mail on day 185. When I visited Robin to buy the furniture catalog, we first had to explain to Demetrius that beautiful things are just as valid as functional ones. Next, I stopped off at Pierre's to get the wallpaper catalog. I finally wanted to start beautifying the farm and began with the alien area. My approach was to put down a lot of plants and although I preferred having grass growing instead of just having the bare ground under them, you couldn't really see anything I was putting down. I don't know if I like it like this and will probably change it in the future. I was able to craft 51 more kegs and add them to the quarry. And since I had some extra sprinklers for my Skull Caverns runs, I added them to the island farm with some more starfruit and ancient seeds. Day 186 was a day of harvesting, planting, kegging, and selling. I shipped hundreds of key fruits, planted artichokes and ancient fruits, then went to the desert to trade in three more prismatic shards for rock candy and bought 400 more starfruit seeds for the island. My kegs were refilled with whatever I had lying around, and I shipped all of the bottles I had collected. I made half a million that night, which was pretty good. The next day was marvelous. My ostrich had finally hatched, and I named her Button. Look at her. She's a miracle baby. Hundreds more key fruits were ready, and I replaced them with more artichoke and fall forage seeds. I hadn't changed my outfit in a while and wanted to start working on completing the cooking collection. So I made an oil stained shirt with, well, some oil, and a headscarf with a red mushroom. For sanitary reasons, you know? The tailoring chests were getting out of control, so I got a dresser from my furniture catalog to put all my shirts into. Then I got to work cooking. I had been pretty good about keeping a little bit of everything, although I still needed a few fish and crops. It was raining, so I was able to get one of the missing fish, an eel, right away. Oh, and I also took the four precious stones quest from Mr. Key. Day 188 was a super good luck day, and since I was very close to having all the Omni Geodes I would need, I decided to head back into the Skull Caverns. I was inspired by my cooking session yesterday to dress up as our favorite desert dweller, and used a tomka soup I had cooked to tailor an oasis gown and a fairy rose to tailor a long dress that I dyed a matching blue. I also dyed my hair to be Sandy's signature red and picked up a lush rose at the Hat Mouse, since she loves flowers. At some point during my run, I noticed I had gotten another lucky ring. Neat. I also got more cowboy hats, but only the two colors I already had. My efforts yesterday had paid off, and on day 189, I took the 420 Omni Geodes I had and traded them in for the green turban and the magic cowboy hat at the Desert Trader. 
I gave Mr. Key four prismatic shards, and since I had also successfully completed his key crop quest, I had lots of key gems to spend. So I got the last crafting recipe I needed, the hopper, and 22 mushroom tree seeds, which I planted wherever I could on the farm. Remember, I still want that mushroom cap. I worked on improving my friendships with villagers and was able to get Penny, Maru, Marnie, Jody, Vincent, Haley, and Sam up to full hearts today. I paid the Statue of Uncertainty to reset my mining professions and gave Gingham the green turban, since she had been sporting the deluxe cowboy hat for quite some time. There were a few hours left in the day, so I started decorating my kitchen. I was so engrossed in what I was doing that I forgot the time and passed out. That night, I chose the miner and blacksmith professions, so I could finally start selling bars. Sam invited me to come watch his band's concert in Zuzu City on day 190. After completing my farm chores, which included shipping about 200 metal bars, it was back to decorating the house. I wanted a natural, jungly feeling, so I went to the island trader to get a tropical TV, a wild bed, and a few jungle torches. I couldn't swap the bed quite yet, since Prada refused to get up. She spoiled. Even though my rooms were mostly only half finished by the end of the day, I was starting to get a better feel for what the drip household would look like. Day 191 was Taco Tuesday. That only really means that it was a Tuesday, and I put on a refined sombrero I bought from the Hat Mouse and tailored a tortilla shirt using, well, a tortilla. Tacos should be celebrated a lot more often. They're an amazing dish. I wanted to continue to work on friendships, so I handed out more gifts. Happy Taco Tuesday, Harvey. Don't mind me, George. I won't tell anyone about this weird mole. I accidentally stumbled into Elliot's book reading, Haley's photo session with cows, and Mara's robotics experiment. The house was getting more and more swaggy, which made me very happy. The year was slowly but surely coming to a close, and there were still quite a few things I was very close to accomplishing, but just weren't quite finished. One of those things was shipping 15 of every crop, which unlocks the cowpoke hat at the hat mouse. So on day 192, after picking up Key's Danger in the Deep Quest again, I bought and planted more red cabbages and beets, because those were the last two that were missing. Other than that, I just continued to put down bits and pieces in my house. This bigger room on the right is shaping up to be a sitting room, where you can sit and read and look at the fishies and the hats on the sea urchins. How quaint. Even though I was still loving my tortilla outfit, I felt like it was time to put on something a bit more autumnal again. So I tailored a pleated skirt with a poppy that I dyed orange, a green buttoned vest from a spice berry, and decided to finally put on my magic cowboy hat. I looked very spiffy, which made it even more sad that I had to do the boring task of kegging more stuff. But at least I stood out in the crowd at Sam's concert. On the island, I tried to catch some fish I needed for cooking recipes and was only semi-successful, but at least I got a flounder. By day 194, I had realized that I was missing a single morel to either finish the crafting or shipping collection. So after chopping down a few fully grown mushroom trees and not getting the mushroom cap, I went to see if the traveling cart lady was selling one. She wasn't. I harvested my forageables, then found my first ostrich egg in the auto grabber. Yay! I shipped it, putting me one step closer to completing my shipping collections tab. It would be winter soon, and I wanted to have my farm looking pretty before everything was covered in snow, so that's what I worked on for the rest of the day. If I could wish for one thing in the 1.6 update, it would be to have a few more varied decorations. Don't get me wrong, I love the plants and seating arrangements, but variety is the spice of life, especially on Drip Farm. The rest of my mushroom trees were fully grown on day 195, and I got the mushroom cap literally from the first tree I chopped down. Of course, I wanted to put it on right away, and paired it with the green flannel shirt I had tailored from a super meal. If this outfit doesn't scream fall to you, I don't know what to tell you. Massive amounts of starfruit were ready to be picked and replanted on the island. I shipped a fish row and the last morel I had, the final two things needed for my shipping tab. It was the night of the Spirits Eve Festival, and after last year's mishap, it was the Spirits Eve Festival, so I wouldn't be allowed into town meaning I couldn't tailor an outfit on the day specifically dedicated to dressing up. What kind of designer am I? I had come prepared, with a pumpkin head from the Hat Mouse. Happy Halloween, y'all! Day 196, I woke up to the full shipment achievement. It was the last day of fall, and I wanted to keep the mushroom cap I had worked so hard for on for a bit longer, so I switched back into it. It was also a Sunday and the last day I could complete Key's Reset Mines quest. 
So after unsuccessfully checking the traveling cart lady to look for Morel, I went to the desert trader to give them jades in exchange for staircases, then staircased my way down the mines. I was done by 8pm and decorated a bit more here and there before winter. Tis the season to be swaggy. I tailored a coffee bean into a dyeable flannel shirt, bought the earmuffs at the hat mouse, then dyed my hair and clothes different shades of wintry blue. I was very close to being at Max Hearts with everyone in the valley, so I decided to hand out gifts to anyone I could. Happy birthday, Kroby! After watching Clint be real creepy with my wife on the set of Shane's commercial, I decided to invite him to the movies. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. He also decided to be weird with me, but I wasn't having it. No, Clint, we're not. And if you touch me, I will call the police. Other than that, I put down some of my crane game goodies around the farm, went to the island to pick up the Reset Mines quest again, and trade some of my key gems for a pair of Junimo chests. I was also able to pick and ship some beets. On day 198, more starfruit on the island farm was ready. After replacing them with pumpkin seeds I had left over from fall, I kegged what I could. I think I'll stop mentioning this stuff for the most part from now on since it's kind of tedious and a big part of achieving perfection is making 10 million G and getting the golden clock. So you bet that I'll be growing and kegging whatever I can. I got this most precious cutscene with Leo who was adjusting very well to his life in the valley, then went to the adventurers guild to sell weapons and rings that had been piling up in my chests on the island. After that I started making my way down the dangerous mines. That tiger hat was starting to give me sleepless nights. So on day 199, I tailored an officer uniform with glass shards, put on my official hat, and gave Gingham the swashbuckler hat to show the tiger slimes in the volcano that we meant business. Halt, sir. I know you're carrying goods that I must confiscate. Unfortunately, they weren't intimidated, and none of them dropped the hat, despite my best efforts. Once I had gotten through the volcano, I warped to the mountains, and it was back to the mines. It's almost kind of sad to say, but the next six days were almost identical. From days 200 to 205, I fought my way through the volcano looking for that dang hat, but with no luck. I mean, I really tried. It was like Groundhog Day. Volcano run, then back to the mines. Volcano run, farm chores. Hand out gifts, volcano run. The only thing that did change from time to time was, of course, my outfit. First, I tried going with a hot pink shirt tailored from a poi and a star helmet made from a mushroom tree seed. I thought the islandy outfit might lure the slimes into a sense of false security, kind of like an undercover cop. I also even went the extra mile and bought the cinder clown shoes for 100 cinder shards from the dwarf in the volcano. When that didn't work, I put on the frog hat I had fished up from the gourmet frog's cave, turned a duck egg into a green jacket, and a prismatic shard into magic genie pants. Hey y'all, it's me, the gourmet frog. Me's hungry for some tiger hat who's growing one. Aw, oh, come on guys. The volcano dwarf was selling the pink bow on day 205, so I traded my frog hat for that, but still, nothing. When I laid battered and broken in bed that night, after another unsuccessful volcano run, my perfect wife knew just the way she could cheer me up, by finally asking if we should adopt a baby. Of course I said yes. On day 206, I had to take a break from the volcano. My little heart couldn't take the disappointment anymore. Instead, I wanted to work on completing the crafting tab, so I tailored a blacksmith apron with a fiddlehead risotto and paired it with a mage's hat from the hat mouse. Look, there's no great hat for crafting, but maybe you could say I'm a magician at the workbench. Just go with it. Before I got to work, I made sure to give Sebastian a birthday frozen tear, completing his friendship. Then I just stood at my workbench and went through the list of recipes, crafting anything I hadn't made yet. By the end of my DIY spree, there was a single recipe I couldn't complete because I was missing that single ingredient. A morel for a life elixir. The only way you can get a morel, if you don't have the mushroom cave, is from the secret woods in spring, or if you're really lucky from the traveling cart. So that's something I almost definitely won't be able to achieve this year. I spent that night going to the movies with Kent, who was one of the last three people I wasn't at Max Hearts with, together with Leo and the dwarf. I also decorated a bit more of the farmhouse. Oh look, another seating area. Day 207 was a super good luck day. You might remember that one of my goals is to have all my hats on display. My house was already quite full with fish tanks as it was, and I've also come to realize that sea urchins aren't as abundant as one might think. 
The only other option I have is to get more alien rare crows. So I drank a ginger ale, ate a spicy eel, and hit up the calico spin machines again. It was going okay, but I wanted a preposterous amount of key coins. So after a while, I decided to go make a pumpkin soup for more luck and eat that instead, since it gives you twice as much luck. It was worth it and I immediately noticed an uptick in my wins, but it still wasn't exactly a fast process. I gambled for a real life hour and even ate lunch while continuously mashing the same button over and over again. Once I finally got the jackpot, I had enough coins for 38 more rare crows. I asked Clint to open up some geodes I had lying around, getting the golden helmet, then started setting up my newest family members. It had gotten late, so I finished my personal area 51 on day 208. As you can see, I also took the time to put a super cucumber in the hidden box behind Clint's shop to get Hntmk. Oh my goodness, why does this make me so happy? I want to believe, I truly do. I had 8 aliens left over that wouldn't fit, so I found nice spots for them around the farm. No amount of squinting will help you see the tropical clip on this alien's dome. This took up most of the day, but I had a few hours to do some more decorating inside, placing some tropical beds and this adorable monster garland into our future child's room. You know what's sadder than doing 7 unsuccessful volcano runs back to back? Doing 9 unsuccessful volcano runs back to back. That's right, I spent 9 whole days in the volcano without even getting a whiff of the tiger hat. There are only 15 more days in this year and I wanted that hat, damn it. I mean, I got the living hat for crying out loud. Who do I look like, Tom Cruise? Am I starring in Mission Impossible without even realizing it? I'll give you an abbreviated version of what else happened during these days, but please be aware that the majority of my time is going toward this soul-sucking task. So as you can see, I put on my coconut helmet and a magma cap I tailored into a magenta shirt on day 209. On day 210, I staircased my way down the Dangerous Skull Caverns, which netted me 40 more key gems when I reached level 100. I was actually planning on just staying there for the rest of the day to take advantage of the radioactive ore, and even got another Galaxy Soul drop from my beloved mummies, but I died on level 175. I still had some more time left in the day, so... <sighs> Day 211, I picked up the 4 Precious Stones quest, which I was able to finish right away, then used my key gems to get the last galaxy soul I needed, as well as 3 more aquatic sanctuaries. I also tailored a viking helmet with an ostrich egg and a fake muscle shirt with the muscle remedy. The hunt for the tiger hat ain't over till the fat lady sings. At least I was finally able to complete the goal of having fully enchanted tools and the infinity blade. Literally nothing cool happened on day 212. I got a night market painting and passed out while kegging more stuff. What novel adventures. I checked my perfection status on day 213. I was at 87% and still needed the golden clock, obviously. A few more friends, meaning Kent, Leo, and the dwarf. The last cooking recipes and the one morel to be able to craft a life elixir. I also traded 30 tarot roots for a bluebird mask at the island trader. Polly wants a tiger hat. On day 214, I tailored an Aeronite shirt to match my bird mask, then handed out three more gifts, getting Leo to full hearts. I also took the dwarf to the movies at 11 in the morning, but they seemed to like it. My fit changed yet again on day 215. I went with a goblin mask from the Hat Mouse and a Tumblr's jersey tailored with pepper poppers. I like to think of myself as a linebacker Luke Goblin looking for the tiger hat, trying to tackle the thing out of him. Not that it helped or anything. Thanks to the 100th topaz I gave them, the dwarf was at max friendship. Two down, Kent to go. I sold hundreds of gems and void and solar essences, as well as 996 coffees that were just piling up in my chests on day 216. It was a nice 300,000 G cash infusion towards the golden clock. Then, on day 217 and the last attempt at the tiger hat for now, I tailored a jester shirt with a pyrite and put a box on my head, because I'm feeling more and more ashamed of my fruitless and never-ending volcano runs. Apparently, I'm a joke to everyone, so I might as well dress like it. I put down all the fish tanks I had and filled them with any sea urchins I could find. I just couldn't bring myself to do another volcano run on day 218 and took a small break. I decorated my basement and was going for a cozy bar kind of vibe. I also kegged more ancient fruit and Key's Prismatic Grange quest was up for grabs again. Then I spent the rest of the night placing more decorative plants around the farm. 
On day 219, I wanted some dignity for the umpteenth volcano run, so I tailored a red tuxedo with a red plate and put on the red polka dot bow from the hot mouse. Before I headed back to the volcano, I gave Kent a rabbit's foot, which put him over the threshold to Max Hearts, aka I had achieved Max friendship with everyone. Yep, it's me. I'm back, y'all. Please give me that hat. Pretty please with the cherry on top. No? Okay. At least I was able to finish Key's Prismatic Grange quest. It was still a wonderful night because the adoption agency dropped off our baby girl. I named her Button. She and the ostrich have the same name because this child was just as much of a miracle as finding the egg. <laughs> Definitely not because I had forgotten that I had already named the ostrich that. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was day 220 and I became aware that there were only five days left in the year. On the one hand, I really wanted that hat. On the other hand, I didn't want all of winter to just be me running through the volcano and being disappointed. So I decided to change my approach and got a slime hutch. My plan was to breed tiger slimes, kill them, hope to get a hat to drop, and if it didn't work, restart the day. Now, this doesn't mean I'll never have to go back to the volcano again, since I'll still have to kill tiger slimes for eggs at some point, but it'll be less desperate. But for now, I wanted to focus on something else for a change. First, I ate a seafoam pudding and fished up the Iridium Crobus statue, then headed to the ocean and fished until I caught a sardine, one of the last fish I would need to finish my cooking log. After marveling at Little Button for a bit, I wanted to make her room nicer, so I decorated it a bit more. Perfect. Since day 221 was a really good luck day, I planned to head to the Skull Caverns. My iridium stash was starting to wane, and I wanted to sell as many bars as possible, seeing as I still needed that golden clock. So I tailored an iridium power shirt with an iridium ore, and put on a gents cap from the hat mouse, since the color of the bow kind of matched. Plus, there were fewer and fewer hats to choose from. I was already blowing up rocks when I got the notification saying that the Feast of the Winter Star had started. I'm sorry, I have over 3.5 million G to make, I ain't got time to be charitable today. Day 222, I made a darkness suit with a wilted bouquet and put on the cat ears from the hat mouse. I am the godfather of the tiger slimes and will make sure they're all sleeping with the fishies by the end of today. But before it was back to my personal hell, I had another big starfruit harvest on the island to deal with. I want to make them an offer I can't refuse. I said you can't refuse it, dang it. On the morning of day 223, Marlin was standing outside my door to give me a slime egg for my slime hutch. I won't ever incubate it though, since I'll have to be very picky and only use the tiger slime ones for my plan to work. The fact that my slime hutch was ready also meant that I unfortunately knew what my day was going to be like. Before I headed back to the island, I tailored a sugar into a sugar shirt, since this face is exactly what I feel like at the moment. And I bought a whisper mask, which is supposed to massage your face. I need to relax, maybe this will help. Oh no, the head clipping is giving me anxiety. Just breathe Mimi, you can do this. This volcano run was doubly disappointing since I didn't get a hat or any tiger slime eggs. Gingham got the box hat since she was also mortified. Day 224 and the last day of the second year. I learned the last cooking recipe from the Queen of Sauce, hugged my wife, then checked the traveling cart one last time in the hopes of getting a morale. In vain, of course. I used a spaghetti to tailor a sauce stained shirt and put on the chef's hat provided by the mod to complete my cooking tab today. I was checking the missing recipes when I realized I was missing a single tomato for bruschetta. You've got to be kidding me. I bought a stupid tomato seed from Pierre, then planted it on Ginger Island. By that time, it was late enough for me to be able to get a squid I needed. After cooking a fried calamari, a dish of the sea, and a strange bun, I just needed that frickin' bruschetta. I used the strange bun to steal Ferrogamon from Vincent's toy box, then took another look at the perfection tracker in Key's walnut room. 89%. I need a single morel, one measly tomato, and three million more G. Grandpa's ghost visited me that night and told me I had brought great honor to the Drip family. That's all I ever wanted to hear, Grandpappy. Since there's honestly not much left to do, and I'll probably be able to get the golden clock in the next two to three weeks, I've decided to get the job done, and add a little postscript to this year in Stardew Valley. Here's how I reached perfection. On the first day of spring in my third year, 
four candles lit up around Grandpa's shrine. I put on a tracksuit made of pancakes and a cool cap from the hat mouse. This ain't a marathon anymore. This is a sprint to perfection. There's no need for you to be ashamed anymore, Gingham. Grandpa's proud of us. After picking up the Statue of Perfection, I prepped my farm to plant the only crop I would be growing outside this spring, rhubarb, for max profits. I've kind of been unsure about when to call it, since my decorating is always a work in progress, and I keep adding things here and there, but I think that I can officially say I have achieved the goal of having a beautiful farm and farmhouse. Nothing exciting happened on day 226. All I did was tailor a shrimp shirt with a shrimp cocktail, because I thought it looked funny, then re kicked tons more star fruits. I made over 1 million G with everything I was able to sell that night. I put on a banana shirt made with banana pudding and the mouse ears from the hat mouse on day 227. It was like the tropical chicken thing all over again, except this time it was a tropical mouse. But I actually immediately got a double slime egg drop from the ones on the western side of the island, which gave me the little boost of dopamine I needed to trudge on through the volcano. And although I couldn't find the hat, big surprise, I did get two more eggs, so I was pretty optimistic about my slime hutch plans. I set everything up and put my four little treasures straight into incubation. I achieved another small milestone on day 228. After putting on a white dot shirt made with a poppy seed muffin and a daisy clip, then dying during my volcano run, I found a morel in the secret woods and finally finished the crafting collection. I decided I want to collect some of the secrets from around the valley, so I started by fishing up a lifesaver from right here. The next day was boring. I put on a dripping cat hat, symbolizing me being pooped out from looking for the stupid tiger hat, and a fringed vest made from a chowder. I did this stuff again, yada yada yada, then fished up a foliage print you can get if you fish right here, and a squirrel figurine from this spot. I wore a sombrero and a bandana shirt tailored from a jasper on day 230. Robin built me two extra rooms free of charge and instantaneously, then I spent a little time finding some wallpapers and floorings for them. I wanted to hand in 12 leaks to Evelyn, since she had put up a special order to get some presents for George, when I had to prove that I had really meant what I had sworn to Yova a few weeks ago. No, no Alex, you're not worthless. Um, everyone has their strengths and weaknesses. Oh god, another one. He's naked. Yeah, we're friends. I'll even give you a shirt I tailored if you promise to put it on right now. Two male and two female tiger slimes had hatched on day 231. Then all I did for the rest of the day was staircase my way down the skull caverns without eating, since I had picked up Key's hunger challenge. It went extremely well, and despite the bad luck, I got four prismatic shards and 400 iridium ore. Day 232 was a money-making day. I crafted loads more furnaces to smelt through the iridium faster, then put on a blue charming ribbon and a shirt tailored with an opal. The longest train in the history of Stardew Valley was passing through and dropped exactly 11 stones and 5 geodes. What a thrill. The ancient fruit in my greenhouse was picked, and after refilling all my kegs, I crafted 34 more that I added to the quarry and filled them up too. My wine in iridium bar hall netted me over 1.6 million G that night so only 700,000 G to go to be able to afford the golden clock. On day 233, Button was finally more than just a slumbering ball of pixels. Hello, my precious swaggy protege. My slimes had already gotten it on and had a little baby of their own. I kind of feel bad about my plans to just slaughter them all. It's a good thing they're oblivious. My tomato was fully grown and I put on a chef's coat made with an escargot and a cake hat from the hat mouse to cook my final dish, a bruschetta. Day 234, I picked up Key's crop quest again. Not to complete it, but to get access to the crops, since there's a mask I forgot to make the first time around. I got two more tiger slime eggs, then fished for the Physics 101 painting at the forge. My new painting went here, right behind another extra large fish tank. By the way, I've been looking for sea urchins whenever I can, but I just can't find any. My hats are starting to pile up in my chests again, and those sea urchins would really come in handy. Day 235 was just spent fishing up more of the game's secrets. I got the ornate necklace and the vista painting from the bathhouse and the wall basket from the pond in the secret woods. Day 236, I changed into a girl's hat and a pink shirt tailored with a salmon dinner and also dyed my hair pink to look a bit more... springy? Vernal. 
Apparently I wanted to look more vernal. I don't think I've ever heard that word before. After another disheartening volcano run, I tried to fish up the pyramid decal in the desert, but didn't hook it. You want to know how I celebrated my egg festival this year? In the volcano, wearing bunny ears and a shirt with belt tailored from a limestone. Of course, this is a hunt I have been losing at for the past several months, so no tiger hat for me. I also knew that this playthrough would be coming to a close very soon, so I took the four prismatic shards I still had and tried to tailor them into the last two prismatic pieces of clothing I didn't have yet. The prismatic shirts with white and dark sleeves. I did get the one with dark sleeves, but the others were all just repeats of things I already had. Oh well, dark sleeves are cooler anyway. The Junimos and I picked my rhubarbs on day 238. Good job, team. Then I put them in my kegging chest. In hindsight, I don't know why I didn't just sell everything I had in there. It's not like I'm gonna have to keg it all again. I also fed the trash bear, who wanted an anchovy, a herring, spaghetti, and an espresso. He drifted off into the night, cleaned up all the trash, and gave Dusty a glow-in-the-dark steak. If you don't think my outfit for day 239 is adorable, we might not be able to be friends. I'm a little glowing teddy bear. Then it was go time. My wine was ready and, since I'm also as smart as a stuffed animal, I also refilled all the kegs. There was even a leak at the bus stop. The last one I needed to pick up to get Evelyn's wonderful coffee maker. I knew I would be able to achieve perfection tomorrow, so I spent the rest of the day working on my plans for the grand finale. But you'll just have to keep watching to find out what that means. I wanted to be ready for the fanfare, so on day 240 I wore a party hat I got at the Hat Mouse and a magic sprinkle shirt tailored with a rock candy. My plan for the day was simple. Kill the family of tiger slimes in the slime hutch for a chance at the tiger hat. If it didn't drop, I would reset the day and try again. Only then would I buy the golden clock with the 10 million G I now had in my pockets. I'm so sorry y'all, just shut your eyes, it'll be over soon. I restarted the day numerous times, and at some point, I thought it might be helpful to use the last rock candy I had for more luck. So I decided it was best to go get the candy and sleep another day before buying the golden clock to not have to run to the chest and get it after each reset, instead having it ready to go in my inventory. Ooh, a new baby piggy. Let's call her... Pantyhose. Day 241 still says 240 because... I was shell-shocked. I realized that I had slept after killing the slimes no! without making them respawn. I couldn't believe it. I even went to go look in the slime hutch just to be sure, but of course, they were all gone. My garb doesn't fit at all anymore. This is the worst celebration I've ever been to. To quote the late great Leslie Gore, it's my party and I'll cry if I want to. You would cry too if it happened to you. I did some thinking. It would take way too long to get the whole slime hutch plan to work again, and honestly, I just wanted this whole thing to be over. So I decided to eat the rock candy and give the volcano one final go. I almost certainly wouldn't get the hat, but I felt I would be able to let go and end the series, knowing I had given it my all. I felt more and more defeated after every slime I slayed. And then, it actually happened. Look! This is dramatic storytelling at its finest. I immediately put on the most valuable piece of clothing I would ever own, dropped out of the volcano on floor 5, and went to the wizard to get the last piece to the perfection puzzle. <coughs> then I took care of the last preparations for this swaggy ending tomorrow. Day 242. The day I finally officially achieved perfection. I hugged my wife and baby Button, then warped to the island to pick up the only hat that would be good enough for today. Concerned Abe's head. After giving Ingham the tiger hat, I put on a yellow suit tailored with a banana pudding and dyed my trusty farmer pants a nice yellow to match. Gingham and I were looking fresh when we galloped to the summit to find Emily there, waiting to celebrate with us. It was touching to see all the little sprites of everyone and everything we had encountered. Alex, who I hadn't grown to like, but except for who he was. The sheep, the pride of my animal collection, the tiger slime that gave me the most spectacular ending to the tiger hat saga, the mummy, which had kicked off my whole tailoring pursuit, and grandpa himself, who inherited drip farm to me where I was able to rise to my full potential. I spent a few moments looking out over the valley before I left to kick off the last celebratory event of this playthrough.
welcome to the runway. I proudly present all of the outfits I was able to tailor but haven't been able to show off yet. I'll give you the total drip count at the very end. While this footage is still rolling, I want to thank you all so much for watching this series. I just wanted to try my hand at making videos and never really expected many people to see it. The fact that you guys have taken the time out of your day to watch, like, comment, and or subscribe to my dinky little channel means the world, honestly. I'm already itching to start a new 100 days series with a different shtick and have a few ideas, but definitely let me know if there's something that you would want to see. Again, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye y'all.